Yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel here at Crypto Nation. I never left and I'm still here and I ain't going nowhere. Anyways, uh, I just want to say thanks to my recently new subscribers. Hey, if you're new here to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button for uh, post notifications. Anyways, let's get right on to it. All right, let's get started here. Uh, let's see what's going on with Bitcoin. All right, uh, before, you know, before the main event. All right, uh, we got... Um, um, 115,000 Bitcoin Ethereum. We got it at 4,656. We got XRP at 309. And we got, let me see, let's, what's going on with Solana? Okay, we got Solana at two. Um, oh, wow, Solana's at 243. While wow, Solana's doing good, real good, it's up over 20% for the last seven days. Wow. Uh, yeah, Solana is. Look like it's doing very uh, well. We got XRP at 309. So, yeah, all season is definitely here. Okay, we got the fear and greed. Fear and greed is back up to 52. And we got the total market cap at four. We're back over four trillion. So, we're looking good, man. Uh, back over four trillion for the whole uh, uh, cryptocurrency uh, market. Uh, but, anyways, like I said, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button for post notifications. So, I wanted to do this update on XOR, on Sora, how. It's, you know, it's using the Hyperledger technology and how this is kind of a game changer. And Hyperledger is, you know, for DeFi, this is, you know, I, I guess I'll say it's like a game changer. It's a it's a technology that's needed. But anyway, let's get take a look at the price first. Uh, we got the market cap back over 100,000 market cap. We're at 108,000 market cap liquidity. We got the liquidity just over 3,000 liquidity. Of course, uh, we you know, we got to get the liquidity back in here. We're going to see what's going to happen with this project over the next, you know, over the next few months between now and 2026. You know, anything can happen. You know, we can have, um, like I said, big wells come in. We, you know, they're going to be doing, like I said in my previous videos on on this, they, they're doing the uh, the global CBDCs. You know, they got that going to be going on. A couple of countries are already in um, in testnet. We're basically their digital dollar. They're going to have it on the SOAR network. So they're, they're, I, I believe that these guys are working behind the scenes. And like I said in my last update, sometimes what's going on with the actual project, it doesn't really correlate what's what's going on with the price and tokenomics. Obviously, we all know it. The tokenomics and price is horrible. But but at the end of the day, it's dirt cheap. It's beyond dirt cheap. Uh, you can get uh, trillions and centillions of, of uh, tokens for super cheap right now. So, uh, you know, we do know they're burning coins. Coins get burned through, you know, with transactions and all that. You know, like I said, uh, Sora, they got their own wallet. Uh, I downloaded their wallet. They got their wallet. They got the, um, they have their own debit card. So, yeah, um, you don't, you know, you don't see too many scam projects coming out with their own debit card and wallets and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, but I guess a lot of people, the tokenomics and the price, a lot of people associated that with scam, you know, because, you know, of course, the liquidity is going to be very low. With Look at the price. We're at 17 zeros, you know, for crying out loud, you know, we're at 17 zeros. But anyways, uh, let's look at the low here. We're at we're at. Let me see here. It shows the max at 16 zeros 56. I'm trying to think, is this the one month chart? Let me see here. Let's take okay. Let's take a look at the one month, the monthly. Okay, taking a look at the one month. Uh, we went all the way down to look. At, okay, I'm looking at the one month route. Okay, here on Dex tolls. Okay, we we went all the way down to seventeen zeros thirty three was our new low. Okay, seventeen zeros thirty three, and then our high was sixteen zeros sixteen zeros sixty or sixty oh nine. So yeah, looking at that one month chart, we came all the way down. From 16 zeros all the way down to 17 zeros 33. So yeah, uh, but we did bounce off that resistance. It looked like you can see where it bounced. Right now we're sitting at 17 zeros 65. We went up to 68. It looked like, but you know we kind of retraced. You know, but I'm, I'm definitely taking advantage of this. The fact that we we went all the way down to 17 zeros. I'm going to be buying, picking up some more XR. You know, just because. Um, so yeah, the global. Um, you know what they're going to be doing with you know with global you know finance uh, is totally decentralized and the whole thing with the um very interesting the fact that this was back in 2021 this this project was at at um 
over $900 a coin, then people be like, what the hell would happen? How did it go from $900 a coin all the way down there? Even I wonder like what, 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 what was going on, what happened? But you know, a lot of cryptos, you know, there's a lot of cryptos who went down pretty bad, like Zen crypto, XCN crypto. But this one, I'll say, that, like I said before, this coin is the most the most oversold crypto in history. And this is going to be a, a definitely, I, I believe this is an opportunity of a lifetime, you know, to turn just a little bit of money into like a lot of money. But anyways, let's see here. Um, holders, 25. We're at 25,000 holders, man. We're looking at 25,000 holders. Obviously, the liquidity is going to eventually go up over time like i said it's going to be very interesting to see what, what's going to happen in 2026 with uh with xr but anyways i wanted to um weed over about the the hyper ledger you know can't forget about that that's the main event for this uh upload okay talking about hyper ledger and how sore they're using this technology and everything and uh, but anyways it says here sore and hyper ledger are distinct projects from different organizations but they have a crucial connection through the company uh, Sora Michu. Uh, Sora is a decentralized public blockchain and economic system, while Hyperledger is an open source enterprise um, blockchain project run by the Linux Foundation. Okay, so there we go. So Hyperledger is open source originally because it's, you know people's familiar with Linux. Is Linux? If you've been in our under rock, you don't know what Linux. Is. Linux is an operated. It's an open source operating system make a long story short that's what linux is like you got the os the osx the apple operating system you got windows but linux is an open source um, um operating system I, i'm quite sure most people know about or heard about uh you know linux people who somewhat you know tech savvy but anyways and it's um and it i guess the hyperledger is also used as the um as enterprise so enterprise blockchain project run by the linux foundation uh Saramitsu develop one of the core hyperledger frameworks hyperledger i iroha and also use it excuse me uses it as a foundation uh for the sora platform all right uh, then it says sora is a decentralized economic blockchain network focused on providing tools for decentralized applications dApps and building a a uh sup, uh supranational excuse me, supranational economy, all right? Uh, key characteristics include tokenomics, SOAR's native token, XR is designed to be deflationary uh, with a portion of the token burned with every transaction. A token bonding curve algorithm governs the, uh, the elastic supply of, of XR. Oh, then it says network. Uh, it is a blockchain that functions as a, as a parachain uh, with the Polkadot ecosystem, it can connect to other networks like Ethereum via bridges. All right, governance. The Sora network uh, features a, a, a democratic on-chain governance system, the Sora Parliament, which allows token holders to vote on funding proposals for uh, productive projects. Um, ecosystem, okay. The, the project includes the Polkaswap decentralized exchange DEX, and is integrated into various projects such as central bank, um, digital currencies, CBDCs. There we go. Okay, that's what they're going to be doing. Like, like I said, they're going to be focusing on like developing countries or the countries that you'll probably consider like third world. But they want to have a level playing field where, where it can be fair and free. You know, that way they because you know this new global financial system they don't want to get left behind. So they're giving them, giving them, them, you know, giving giving them the option to have like, you know, their digital currency to put it on, go ahead and put it on a sword network, and that'll be a digital dollar CBDCs. But it's going to be, you know, some people say CBDCs is actually a bad thing, but it can also be a good thing, as well. It it, it really depends how they want to use it, how they want to use CBDCs. Like I said, it could be negative or it could be positive. Like I said, it depends how government or country want to use the the uh, the digital dollar or CBDCs. But we, we can see where everything is going. And one thing I'll say about Sora, this is this project. There's really no other project like this that's putting like a, a country can put their digital dollar on their network through a you know through the central bank, you know through the this, through the global CBDC. So, you know that's what make this really makes this uh, project special. But anyways, uh, back to you know Hyperledger. Hyperledger, it, Hyperledger is an umbrella project of open source blockchain frameworks and tools for building permission enterprise grade blockchain solutions 
Um, it is a global collaboration hosted by the Linux Foundation and includes projects like Fabric, Besu, Ahara. Um, unlike public blockchains, okay, Hyperledger projects are permissioned, meaning participants are known and have their identities um, authenticated. Authenticated. So yeah, so I guess that's the difference between a public blockchain and then then. So this one is more like permission. So I guess it's more like a like a, a private where they know who they are or who's going to be using it or whatever or something like that. But it's built off open source, you know, from Linux. So and they're doing enterprise grade. So like enterprise, which means it's like, you know, institutions can get involved, you know, and stuff like that, you know, doing all the, you know, the transactions and all that. But anyways, um, that's what's uh, going on with that. A lot of more information on that we can go ahead let's see here it says let me see here use case let's go over use case all right it is designed for businesses and organizations that require robust secure and highly uh customizable dist distributed ledger technology dlt applications for specific uh business needs okay then it says no native cryptocurrency uh the hyperledger project does not have its own cryptocurrency the frameworks are designed to be token agnostic through users can build networks with tokens if needed. So yeah, that's what they're you know, using it for. It's not an actual crypto, but it's more of like a framework where you know where people can use it and build. And I guess if they're building their own projects or whatever, uh, something down the line, what they're saying here, through users can build networks with tokens if needed. Okay, then it says modularity. Um, it's frameworks like Hyperledger Fabric and Hyperledger Ahara features a modular architecture with uh, pluggable components for consensus mechanisms identity management and more all right then it says the connection so so and in hyperledger or her okay i'm not i don't want this video guys to be too long i uh, hope i didn't bore you know i just want to put the information but basically what sora th this technology you know what they're um you know what they're what they're doing but uh but yeah i just want to really on this post you know i just want to touch the key points of you know how how X or Sword are using how they're connected and using Hyperledger, and uh, and this is possibly going to be the future of DeFi different DeFi projects. I guess whoever wants to use that technology, you know, um, or whatever. But anyways, they talk more about Sora. Um, let me see uh, shared roots. I'll, I'll read these last two small paragraphs and I'll wrap it up. But I hope everybody got the main point about Hyperledger and how Sora is using it. So it says shares roots uh, really created the distributed ledger platform hyperledger Ahura, which is designed for identity and asset management and enterprise and public sector use cases all right and this one is foundation for sora uh sora's ecosystem specifically uh the sora v3 hub chain is built on top of hyperledger okay so the v3 chain is going to be okay built on a hyperledger i talked about v3 in the version three and that's what the what that's what they're building that's i believe that's what they've been working on sora but their version three i've talked about in other videos okay so i guess they're building on a hyperledger okay then it says that uh the strategic use of our ahara allows the sora network to connect public and permission blockchain networks and enables projects like cbdc's to leverage its infrastructure all right, guys. So, yeah, that's uh, it. You know what I'm talking about, the, you know, the Hyperledger, the Soren Hyperledger. Um, so, yeah, this is what they're, they're, you know, they're doing. Like I said, I believe this is kind of a game changer as well. Like I said, Soren is one of the only, you know, few projects that's, um, you know, that's doing this. But anyways, uh, I, hope, I hope this video is useful. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Also, the link is going to be at the bottom left. If anybody like to come on over, come and join the Patreon. Get on over there, man. I got more low cap gems over there. Uh, about a, a month ago, a month and a half ago, I just covered an, a, a new low cap gem nobody's covering. And I was on our ex uh, the other day. I was on our ex just reading the information, man. This coin. A couple of my Patreon members, I believe, got in this project as well. And I'm holding a pretty nice position on it. It's, it's super cheap. The market cap is really low. And I don't think I'll say this coin is at right now. I think it's still at around eight zeros, but it's definitely going to lose a, a zero soon. Very low market cap. And it, it, it's like a multi-chain, multi-chain like project for like wallets 
like when you swap different cryptos or like or let's say you want to get a, get in on an old coin but it's on a different network paul chain is making it easy where you know it, it's compatible with all dip, with multiple different blockchains you know um the different you know projects they have but anyways come on over to uh patreon and you know i've been uh, covering this project and you know we we are over there um low up on it and then we got back to back uh videos over there we got our 24 7 chat group uh our community's growing over there on patreon definitely uh uh come on over the link will be at the bottom left uh to come join the family but anyways i'm gonna get out of here uh thanks everybody for tuning in that is my update on um on sora and um, xor and hyper ledger and what they're what they're you know doing behind the scenes but anyways i'm gonna get out of here peace